Um, let me start this message with this simple question. What is wrong with the world? What is wrong with the world? What's going on in the world? What's happening in the world right now? I mean, if you are with me and you see the news and you are trying to live a, a life that glorifies God and a life that you think that, yes, uh, it would be meaningful according to God's plans for you, then you, you, you know that something is wrong. Something's going wrong now, and, and, and especially in the war. What's wrong with the war? And we are not the first one who are asking this question. But many people, Christians and no Christians, are asking this very question, what's wrong with the war? Or what went wrong with our war? That would be a more personal question. What went wrong with our war? Because we see our war full of conflicts, a chaos in every day. We, we try to do the sins right, we try to do the sins well, but we just see fear, we see just fraud, we see death, we see uh, media, pollution, crimes, and everything that is related with us in chaos. It's no, in, in order, it's not working as we wish and pray to be work. If we want to understand what's going on in the world, and as many intellectual people, the most intellectual people and professors in this world, they try to answer this question, they say there is no answer for this question. They cannot this define what's happening in the world or what, what, what's going on in the world, that this world is like this today. I mean, just have a review of what's, what's going on these days in, in, in the world. What news says about families, marriage, sex, economics, religion, wars? Who is ruling the world? Who, who, who is in charge of this world? It seems that God is dead. Or if he's not here, or he's sleeping, or he's on vacation, especially in summer. <laughs> What's happening that the war is without control? I don't know if you have seen this movie, a comedian movie called it Almighty. Gene Carey, one of the, my favorite actors. People say that I look like him, but I don't think so. <laughs> so Gene Carey, he, he's a very good comedian, and he just in his movie, Almighty tried to represent God. He tried to, to, re, to do the war of God. And he, uh, in this movie, he said, okay, God, give me your power and ability to, to answer prayers. So he was enjoyed the first time to have the power of God to make changes in, in in physics, in, 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 in chemistry, in people's life, mind. He understands every people's heart, and he listens to prayers. So he starts to answer every pray prayer, yes or no, as according to the petition. But then he gets tired. And he was so busy trying to enjoy other powers of God that he couldn't just spend the whole day just answer prayers. So he just put yes to everyone, yes to every kind of prayer request, and just let everything go by themselves. He just let the, the war go into his arm because he was busy to enjoy his power as a God. And God also, in this movie, take vacation. And then Jim Carrey, in this character, take control of the war. The result of this movie is that the war became a chaos and he couldn't handle and, and, and try to repair what he has done, saying yes to every petition that everyone, everyone Pray to God, ask for something in their life. We know that in the moment that we take God out of our life, or we put God on vacation, the, our world is going to become a chaos. It, the chaos will be gone, and the, it will be uncontrolled until we let God take the throne of our life, take the control of our life. It happens in the 18th century that one period of history have changed dramatically 
and was called the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment. We know that in this time of period of history, from years 160 to 170, 1600, sorry, and 1700, the 80th century, people try to worship knowledge, try to put knowledge first as a sort of light, as a sort of enlightening people's mind. They call it the age of reason, the age of reason. But what happened here in church history, if you are interested in church history, is that it was the beginning of the attack upon the authority of the Bible. In other words, until that time, the Bible was absolutely the inherent word of God. And everything from cover to cover was the word of God. Now, if you ask the Christian, is the Bible is the word of God? Many people will doubt to say, yes, it's the word of God. We here in this church as Presbyterian, we believe that the Bible from cover to cover is the word of God. But if you go to some liberal denominations or independent denominations of Christianity, they will say that, well, some part of the Bible is the word of God and some part of the Bible is not the word of God. It's just the word of the man. And where does God this from? Where does God this idea that this Bible that we believe and we trust and we put our life on it is not the word of God? It comes from this movement of enlightenment. Because they put philosophy and human thoughts in the position of the authoritative divine revelation and the declaration of God's truth to man. As Martin Lloyd-Jones says in his book, this was the problem in this time of history, that they replaced the knowledge of men, the philosophy of people, over the authority of the truth of the Bible, over the, autor the, autor the authority of God's word. And it's not God's word who will rule our life, who will take care of us and control our life, but will be our reason, will be our way of, we philosophize this word or interpret this word. And now you can see the fruits of these two centuries. We can see the fruit today in, in 21st century that, that we call it knowledge is actually our source of depravity. It's our source of going away of reason. And now we try to interpret the reason in, 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 in many ways. We try to redefine everything. Now we try to redefine what kind of gender people should have. I was listening to the news this week and they say, well, now in, in California, they, they say that you shouldn't call to the, to the bathrooms in schools boy bathrooms and get bathroom, but just call it college bathrooms. So you cannot offend people because of the gender, because they believe that there are more than two genders, male and female. Where did God this idea? Where did God this knowledge against what the reason and the knowledge of true remains stained? I mean, things are not changed. When somebody Biologically, every animal or human being has been born, they have been born with one of these two sex, male or female. I don't know where this got this reasonable idea, there is another one. Biologically, there's no, it's no proof that there is a third sex. And what people is trying to do is just to use their power, their influence, the political views or, 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 or color to try to change the world and rule the world. In the 18th centuries, there were brilliant people, smart people, intelligent people, and we are representative of the Enlightenment like John Locke and Hobbes and uh, Mosquecue, Rousseau and Voltaire, and you probably have studied this in, in, in world history. What were their ideas? What they wrote about? They were from different countries, England, France, they wrote about the two treatments of government, Levitan, famous book, The Spirit of Love, 
salt contract. And their ideas were just as simple as this. Preserve life, liberty, property, and people should rule. Government. People try to be their own God. Is this something new? Start from the Garden of Eden. Hope says, government should control evil behavior, not divine right. So now the government knows about how to control the devil. So humans have more power. No Christian have more power to control Satan. The spirit of the law says separation of powers, three branches. Even I, as a pastor, I don't think that there's a perfect sermon that you can give to the people of God just three simple steps to change your life. I know against, I'm not criticizing anyone or any pastor who come with a wonderful power, especially here in Korea, that they teach to tr and train pastors in seminars that to have a sermon with two, three steps, one, two, three, and people are happy. Because I believe that God is a God of creative. He changed forms. And when we think, we, we see Jesus, that Jesus will come and perform a miracle in this way, he goes and makes a miracle in a different way. And it happens from the Old Testament to the New Testament that God is renewing this way of teaching, his way of performing miracles. So we cannot put God in a box. And we cannot put this world in a box because God is in control of this world, not us. Roussel said the government should have a contract between governments and government and rulers. Hmm. If it works. And life is better with liberty, free speech, said Voltaire. <laughs> and now we can see that everybody can say whatever they want. Because they have money, because they have influence, because they have power. What in the world? means this enlightenment or this moving of enlightenment that until today have influence in this world. According to the dictionary, enlightenment means the increased emphasis of the importance of education, politics, and government. I'm fine with the first one, <laughs> but I don't know how it works in the second and the third one. Encourage one to look at oneself rather than to look to God for guidance. That's the main goal of enlightenment. To cast away God from people's life and to let our brilliant minds and intellectual to rule the world because we are more reasonable than God. Because our God, as far as we know, is crude, is, is so far away from people, never can come to our place of common ground to feel what we feel. And we're never going to reach his holiness because we know his standards are so high. So we try to replace God with someone that, and something that we can reach and gain. What we can see here in this movement is not just a star of a revolution, but it's a star of influence. We talked about this the last week. Influence. Happy influence. Are, what, what is the position of Christians? What is the position of the church? What kind of influence is, is having the church today outside of these walls to the world that is in need of Christ? Are we going to every reign, every principle, every government, every place that we know they need Christ as it should be just because we are there, just because we are serving them or ministering them. In other words, what is the influence of the kingdom of heaven? Our campaign this year, 2016, is let your kingdom come because what we believe is that in this time of history, definitely God has to take the control again of the world. That we gave it to the world. We gave it to other people instead to God. And as we just see the scripture today, what is the influence of Christians as the soul of the air and the light of the world? 
John Stott will reply this question, what's wrong with, with this world? Saying that we should not ask what's wrong with the world, for that diagnosis have already been given. Rather, we should ask what's happened to the soul and light instead. We, don't, we are asking the wrong question as Christians. We are asking the wrong question as people of God. What is wrong with the world? We know what is wrong with the world. The first moment that Adam and Eve, they give the power and dominion that they have from God to say that, we know what's going to happen in this world. And we know from history what's going on in this world. So the, the right question is not saying what's wrong with the world, but what is wrong with us? A soul and light. What's wrong with us? What we are doing? What is the influence of the kingdom of God in our life? I mean, we listen to this and we know mentally what we have to do. But are we doing? Are we, as we just saw this on trust and obey? Because there's no way. To be happy in Jesus rather than trust and obey. And we were talking about this at the beginning of this year about the, the virtues of the kingdom of heaven. What are the virtues of the kingdom of heaven? Truth, grace, love, servanthood, self-control, justice, humility. Are we are trusting these words, believing in this word, and obeying to be in a the opposite of tolerance or have grace rather than greed, love rather than self-centers, servanthood in concerts of significance, self-control as a positive sensualist, justice instead of oppression, and humility as opposite of haughtiness. Are we trusting in this war and obeying, or is it just another sermon? I'm not trying to teach you some theory or some lesson. I'm trying to teach you what I, in myself, want to put in practice. Somebody asked me yesterday, how you prepare your sermons? And I say, well, I always preach only the things that I do. Because I don't want to lie to my people that I just come with a theory or a lesson that I know as a pastor putting in practice. And as you heard me a few weeks ago, and you can see my sermons on, on Facebook, that I, with all my heart, I'm fighting with all my strength to be more like Jesus. Now, for me, that seems impossible. But that's actually what God wants us to be, more like Him. And He gave us, and we started for more than two months, the Beatitudes. What are the Beatitudes? Blessed are those who are poor in the spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who, me who are meek, blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty of righteousness, blessed are those who are merciful, blessed are those who are pure in heart, peacemakers, and those who endure persecution. We were talking about this more than two months. And we know that this is a process to go to heaven, to go to the kingdom of God as we just go this sterile heaven. Faith seeking, repenting, Submitting our life, be filled with the Holy Spirit, looking for holiness, see God, and share the gospel and endure the persecutions and the hard times in this world as we seek for righteousness. This is what we, and I'm, I'm teaching you this year. I'm, I don't know if you have ear to, to, you have ear to hear, or you have ear to decorate your heads. Because we can't have these two things just to decorate our head, but not to listen what God said. Are you listening? Are you obeying? Or as James said, we just listen and forgot what, we, what God said. But the word of God is like a mirror. And when we look at the word of God again, we can see our reflection of what we are. Child of God or child of this world. You are a child of God. And Jesus said, you are the light of this world. 
We talked about last week about to be the soul of the air, but today let's focus on be the light of the world. Now, Spurgeon will say like this. The Bible is not the light of the world. It is the light of the church. But the world does not read the Bible. So, the world read Christians. You are the light of the world. Okay? In other words, what Charles Spurgeon said, if you give the Bible to the world, they won't read it. Because they know that for them, it's just paper and ink. For us, it's a spirit and truth. What they want is not just another book. What they want is not just more words. They want to see people's life transformed by the power of this world. If they see your life change it, if they see your life transform it, then they will ask you, where do you got this from? Where do you got that knowledge? Where do you got that light? Because they would call it light. I have a friend that is Christian, and, and, and he's not here in Korea, but he was living in Korea for many years. And when we have fellows in this Spanish church in, in Puchon, uh, he's from Colombia, I'm from Peru, so we used to have uh, Bible studies in Spanish. So he always shared that, yes, when he was in Colombia, he knew this man of God, and he had this light to share the word of God. And he all the time said, he had this light, he had this light. And when he was ref referring to this person who have a life, he was talking about the understanding that this person had from the word of God. The light that this person had from the word of, la the word of God. The enlightenment that the Holy Spirit gives to people when they read, meditate, memorize the Bible. But this word, they won't look for a Bible to be enlightened. They will try to rationalize with people. And as far as they know Christianity, they will try to know approach to Christianity to understand the world. And that's why we call it atheism. That's why we have people who they prefer to look for other religions rather than Christianity. They prefer to, to pursue for Muslim, Hinduism, or any other kind of religion that they have find in this world, rather than to let Christianity be part of their life and the Bible be the guide for their life. We teach to our kids every Sunday to do quiet time here in CEA. And we teach them a song to sing together every Sunday. Thy word is a lamp to my feet is a light to it's a lamp to my feet and it's a light to my path and this is the very bible verse in the psalms and indeed the word of god is a lamp for our life is a light for our paths but it's for those who believe in the bible for anyone who don't believe in the bible doesn't matter how many times they read the bible they're going to use as a pillow to sleep every night. For us as Christians, that will give us light. What is the effect of light? What happens when we, as Christians, read the Bible? First things, the Bible will expose the darkness and the sins that belong to the darkness. First in us, and then to the world. The Bible will explain the cause of the darkness, the source, the reason why this world is like this, in darkness. And the lie will show us and provide a way out of this darkness. That is the effects of the light. And I hope that you can understand that when you read the Bible, these effects will be implanted in your life. I mean, do you recognize that you were in darkness? And maybe because of the sins that you have committed and not confessed yet, you are still in darkness. And you understand that the cause of this darkness is sin. The sin that is rooted in your 
body because you were born in a, with a sinful nature. And do you understand that this, the Bible will teach you that there's only one way, and only one way to get out of this darkness is to come out to the light. And this light have a name, and its name is Jesus. And if you don't come to the light, or in other words, you don't come to Jesus, you're never going to get out of this darkness. So the Bible has these efforts as a light, as a lamp to your path and to your life. Yes, indeed, the Bible will expose the darkness and the sins that belong to the darkness not only to us, but to the world. That's what exactly the gospel and every Christian do in this world. That's the influence that we have. The influence of Christians, according to Martin Joyce, is like, as a light in the world, is to show that the other sins that are in the world, that other sins that are away of God's will, is all darkness. Nothing that is out, out of God is light. Everything that is out of light is darkness. So we cannot say that, oh, oh I'm a Christian, but I want to be involved with these things that, of course, according to the Bible, is no God's will, but it looks good. And it's good for many people, and it's good for me. That's darkness too. Don't be deceived for that. You won't see the fruits immediately, but you will see the fruits later. And the most ultimate fruit will be to separate you from God. The ultimate fruit will be that you will never get heaven. You will probably have a prosperous life. You will have everything that you need in your life. Happy life probably, but you're never going to get to heaven. Now, put in the balance. What is more important, to enjoy this war or to go to heaven? John chapter 3 verse 19 said, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Why we come to the light? Why we let the light expose our darkness, our sinness? our sinfulness. Why we do that? Because we know that there's something more worldly than this war, that is heaven. And that's why when God comes with his light, he tar light our darkness. We change from darkness to light. And that's why we trust, because we believe what the Bible said. Now, as children of life, we have to communicate that to this world. But as children of life, we have to also show this light to the world. Holiness. A life blameless of some kind of persecution against of what the standards of this world have. The Apostle Paul will picture it in this way. In, first, in Philippians chapter 2, 14 and 15. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fall in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. And they are not talking about Hollywood. They are talking about the world, the universe that we have to illuminate this world with our good deeds, with our behavior, just simply with not complaining or arguing about something or someone. Because if we be remain blameless and pure, definitely the world we see, we have light. Not knowledge, but a new life. John will say that children of light, the, 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 he says, the whole world is divided into children of light and children of the darkness. Which one do you belong to? The Christians, like a light being put on, need to say a word, just as being what he is, made people feel 
a shame of what they are doing and in that way he is he's truly functioning as light. So we don't need to preach. We just need to be there. <laughs> and it's just our presence that will illuminate the room and will have an effect to just as people see you enter into a room, a meeting, a place, they will feel guilty. They will feel like sinners, like they are. <laughs> because your light, your holiness, your behavior will expose their sins. Christian shows, Christian shows that they are another kind of life which is possible to mankind, and he brings out the error of and the failure of men's way of thinking and of living. Even though you don't say the word, you don't preach to them, you don't quote the Bible, it's just your way of living that will show to the world a new kind of living, a new kind of thinking that will enlighten their life rather than what they have in the 18th century the impact that you will give to them will be dramatically a transformation in their life that they know probably will prosper us in terms of human kind terms that rich or happy in this world but they will get to heaven and that's your mission and my mission so very quickly the light explains the cause of the darkness and we are the light of the world at this present time we alone have the adequate explanation of the cause of the state of this world because we know this the history of humanity and in spite of the knowledge that have been amazed in the last 200 years after the beginning of the enlightenment in the 18th centuries Fallen men by nature still love darkness rather than light. So even though the enlightenment movement brought to the people reason or they start to rationalize things as they wanted to rationalize, the world preferred to be in darkness. And they create more darkness, even though they call it that they have enlightenment in themselves. Though man knows what is right, he prefers and does what is evil. The trouble with man is not in his intellect, but in his nature. The passions and the lusts that they hold in their life. So we know, with the light of the word of God, with the light of the gospel, what is the reason of darkness in this world? Do you find the reason of why you have problems in your life? Do you, have the do you find the reason what sins are in cows in your life? Give light to these people. Give light to this world. And they will find a way, as you have found a way too. You are the light of the world, says Jesus. And the light shows and provides the only way out of the darkness. So if you turn on the light, you will know the way out. You will know the way to escape. Only we know what is the way to get out of darkness. We know there's only one way. There's only one life. And there's only one truth. That is Jesus. Jesus say, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No one's come to the Father except through me. What man needs is no more light. He needs a nature that will love the light that hate the darkness. They don't need more preaching. They don't need more words. They need an example of purity, an example of life, an example of kingdom living. Now, I cannot say that I'm an example of that, but I'm trying. I'm doing my best. And I hope that you do your best too. And if you do your best and I do my best, yes, we're going to show the way out. Because people are looking for examples. People are looking for, for guidance. And there's no guidance in this world. There's no one who can guide this world out of their darkness. And that's why the people in this world, they are falling whatever. They found at hand. 
and he called them Hinduists, Muslim, terrorists, and all these kind of tendencies that we see in this world, according to the news. Man needs to get back to God, and that's for true. And Christian is, the, is there in the world to tell that there is a way out, the way to God, the way to God, the very simple one that is known in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to this world to seek what was in darkness, to seek what was lost. Now he showed us the way to heaven. He showed us the way to go back to the Father. When you have the light of Jesus, you can heal your sins. You can get out of darkness. God's light reveals what God's love is. And his love will heal you. You know that you cannot be afraid to come to the light. People are afraid to come to the light because they don't know the light. They think that God will judge them. But God is not telling us he will judge us if we come to him. He said and repeatedly he encouraged us to come to him because in him we will find forgiveness. In him we will find love. In him we will find hope, restoration, reconciliation. That's his light. And we need to tell the world that there is light, a light of hope. And if you and I, we are showing this light to this world, this world will be safe like you and I, we are safe today. They're just looking at you. They are watching you. They are looking at what you said, what you do, and what you are doing every day. Let us all today be the light of this world and be the representatives, the ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven here in this time of history in Jesus' name. Let's pray.